As we've already seen, selections can be used to isolate areas of an image. Using a selection also gives us more control over how we fill the area with colour. In this project, we'll see how we can use the selection of this key to first create a shadow beneath it, and then how to make several copies, each with their own shadow. To begin, we need to make sure that the keys layer is the active layer. To do this, we just click on its entry in the layers panel, and we get this blue highlight to let us know it's active. Next, we'll load the key's selection. This is also known as loading its transparency, as the selection only covers the area filled with pixels. To do this, we hold Command on the Mac or Control on the PC, and we can see the cursor changes slightly, and we'll just click on the thumbnail once, and we can see the outline of the selection now surrounds the key. Now we'll need to nudge the selection over slightly to make the shadow, but before we do so, we need to make sure that we've got a selection tool active, otherwise we might get unpredictable results. Different tools have different effects on a selection. We've chosen the marquee tool, but any of the selection tools will do. Next, we'll nudge the selection over. So all we need to do here is use the cursor keys on the keyboard to nudge it five times across to the right, so that's one, two, three, four, five, and five times down. 3, 4, 5. Before we fill the selection, we need to soften the edge slightly. Currently the selection will have a hard edge and that won't be very convincing. So we'll go to Select and Feather and we'll use a radius of around 5 pixels. And we'll click OK. Now we don't see any difference at the moment. The selection only shows us areas with more than a 50% opacity. And of course the feathering goes below that. But we'll see it when we fill it. So let's go to the Edit menu and go to Fill Selection. We've got black as the colour at the moment, so let's click OK. But we can see a problem. We can see a nice soft edge from our feathering, but the shadow is in front and we need it to be behind. So let's undo that by pressing Command Z on the Mac or Control Z on the PC, and we'll go back to the Fill dialog. Before we fill it, we'll go to the Blending Modes, and we'll choose Behind. What this does is it only fills the area that currently doesn't have any pixels. This essentially makes it look like it's going behind the object. We'll lower the opacity to around 50% here. That will give us a semi-opaque shadow, which will look more realistic. And we'll click OK again. And now we can see we've got this nice semi-opaque shadow. It's soft on the edge, and it's only gone behind the key. Now we can move on to making some copies of the key, but before we do, we need to reload the selection. As we've nudged the selection over, we'd lose this area around here because it's, it's currently not selected. If we hold down Command or Control again and click on the thumbnail, this loads the whole selection. As we can see, it doesn't appear to encompass the shadow. That's because of the 50% rule, but it will show up when we make the copies. To make our copies, we need to switch to the Move tool. So we'll click on its icon in the Select section of the toolbox, or we can use its keyboard shortcut of V. If we hold down the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on PC, we can see the cursors change to this double-headed arrow. When we move, it lifts up and creates another copy. And each time we put one down, we can pick it up again to make another copy. And as we can see, this semi-opaque shadow travels with it each time we're making a new copy. This is great for creating backgrounds and any other repeating patterns. The only thing to make note of here is all these keys are being placed on a single layer, so once they're placed, they can't be edited again. If we wanted to keep them editable, we'd need to keep them on their own layer. We'll learn more about this in the Working with Layers chapter. And this is how we can create a shadow attached directly to the object layer, and also make several copies retaining that shadow, all using the Move tool and the object selection.